Alrighty. We got that ready. We got that ready. Now let me just do this. Calibrate since I had to restart everything. Today we're going to start with chapter 1, 1.2, and we're going to hit the highlights of chapters 1 and chapter 2. Um, and I'll go through and explain what some of the highlights are and why they're there and all that good stuff. First of all, page 5. Page 5, we have several terms that are test questions. Data, statistics, population, and sample. So if you don't have a notebook, you need to write those down. I mean, if you don't have a book, you need to write those down. If you do have a book, you need to highlight them. Those four questions are test questions. And you will see them again. What is data? Data is something that I collect. Uh, if I go through here and ask each of you to write your age on a piece of paper and give it to me, I have just collected data. I asked you for your weight, your height, your eye color, your hair color, natural hair color. You would all that that's obtaining data. Alright? So that's what that is. Statistics. Taking that data, finding the mean. Finding the median, finding the mode. That's statistics. Pretty self-explanatory. Population. Population is the big enchilada. If I ask you to go out and find the population of this, I meant the, the in this class being the population, who's in the Marlboro Club? All right. Then, I tell you, choose a sample and find out if they're in the Marlboro Club. So what would the sample be out of this class? Well, you could make it anything. You could, most of you would make it male and female. Okay, so I go out and I ask y'all, each one of you, I send out a piece of paper and say, are you in the Marlboro Club? And you say yes or no. And that's based on eating cigarettes, pretty much. If you're in the Marlboro Club, you... If you smoke one behind every class, you're in the Marlboro Club. Social smokers, you only drink when you smoke. That, that don't count. All right? The only ones I'm talking about are the ones that eat three or four cigarettes an hour. Okay? Uh, you're in the Marlboro Club. So then I say, what about, a pop, what about a sample? And a sample would be, out of the population, we've got more males or females. Male, we've got more females in here. So we're going to say the males. How many of the males are in the Marlboro Club? And the males would be a sample of the population, the population being the class. You can make the population and the sample whatever you want, but which one is always the biggest? The population will always be the biggest. Tri-County Tech students would be a population. Anderson Campus students would be a sample. Can't go the other way around. Alright? 
you can't say the population is Tri County Tech Anderson campus students, and then the popula and then the sample be Tri County Tech students. Doesn't work that way. Capiche? Now, why don't I cover census? Well, everybody in here, even if you've never had a probability and statistics course, should know what the word census means. It's the act of getting information from everybody in the United States or everybody in the population. We have one every how many years? Ten. I thought it was ten. Yeah, ten years. All right? And I really don't look forward to it. When was the last one taken? I guess and I don't know when it was started. I guess it was started on the I was I would hope it was started on like the zero year, but who knows? Um, but that's that. I don't census, I don't use that as a test question. You may see it on homework, but I don't use it as a test question. That's one of those givens. But I did go through the drive through uh, last Sunday and order a order of fries and a couple of honey mustards and they asked me how many is a couple. Why would you ask that? If a man and a woman is married, what are they called? So what is a couple? Two. And you know, I'm not going to say it was Chick-fil-A. I wouldn't have got that at Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A would have said, yes sir. But it wasn't McDonald's either. Okay? No, I don't eat at McDonald's and Burger King. I don't eat there. If I'm going to get a hamburger, it's going to be from Hardee's. Okay? Because they use that gum beef. They don't use pink slime. So, I don't know what Burger King uses. Now, does Burger King use it? You don't know? It comes frozen. So, you really don't know. I know Hardee's. Uh, I know what a hamburger tastes like. I raised beef. It has beef. Now, Wendy's, if you can keep the bun on at Wendy's because it slides all over the place. But I'll eat at Wendy's and Hardee's. That's where I get my cheeseburgers. But when I want chicken, I go to Zaxby's. Okay? Now, a lot of people say, you will go to Chick-fil-A? Well, people, Chick-fil-A is okay, but it's not all that. I mean, people get me how they worship these places. Like, people people camping out at Krispy Kreme for a donut. Okay, if you did it, don't raise your hand, okay? But you need something to do. Okay? I mean, that, that donut's going to be there tomorrow. It's going to be there the next day. Oh, well, they're going to give a free year of donuts. Yeah, whatever. More power to you. If you want to be fat as a horse, that's fine. Uh, I'm sorry. I just, I'm, I'm not a hype person. I don't get into hype. If, if Chick-fil-A is going to give away 100 Chick-fil-A burgers for everybody that's kept out, I'm going to be going the other way. I'm, I'm not one of those people. Some of y'all like that, and that's fine. What does that have to do with this? I have no idea. I'm just talking. But, oh, the drive through Zaxby's. I love Zaxby's because of their French fries. That's why I love Zaxby's. No, I like honey mustard. I'm a honey mustard person. I can put honey mustard on a piece of bread, put another piece of bread on it, and eat it. I love honey mustard, okay? I love it. Okay? Some people are like that with ketchup. Some people are like that with mayonnaise. Some people are like that with... So don't bulk it until you try it, all right? Um, but, yeah. Zaxby's, I said a couple of honey mustards. Didn't want anything else, just a couple of honey mustards and a... And the girl actually asked me, in return, asked me, how many is a couple? Do you think I answered? Nope. Because she needed to find out. So she did because there was two in the bag. Stuff like that irritates me. A person that's in a drive through window should have had at least 11 years of school. And you're telling me that in 11 years of school, and she may or may not have parents, I don't know about that, she don't know what a couple is? Okay, who wants to rebut? Who, who wants to defend her? Anybody? I would have said more than that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Since I'm 28, I know two girls that work the drive 
It wasn't that one. It was the one on Clifton Boulevard. The north side. <laughs> okay? Where everybody, you know, is from the north side. So, I don't know. Uh, a couple means two. Okay? For anybody that doesn't know, a couple is two. It's not a few. It's not... It's not hunky-dory. It's a couple. A couple means two. You know, man and wife. Couple. Couple doesn't mean three. That's a threesome. That's try. Okay? That's open lifestyle. Alternative lifestyle. Okay? Any questions on couple? What other words are there that we can talk about? Several. Many. Several is a few. Several is a few. Several actually means three or four. What's another word? Multiple. You don't use multiple in, in a drive through You'll blow the drive through attendant. Their head will explode. Yeah, you don't know. Don't use that. There some, might be something coming out of their ears. Kind of like when you give them six cent. Nine dollars and fifty six cent. You give them ten dollars and six cent. <laughs> Because I can't do simple math. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, we'll go to the next thing. That's the way I teach people. I'm sorry. Uh, not with this. When we get into the math, we'll actually move along a whole lot faster. I don't like going over uh, definitions. This is not math class, in my opinion. This is English class. So anyway, next, we're on page five. Moving quite along, moving right along. Uh, when I see something important, I will stop. I really don't like this. Hold on a minute. I wish I could make it. That's why. There we go. Hallelujah. Amen. There we go. Nothing... Nothing, nothing. Okay, page 11. I'm going to write some stuff on the board, and I'm going to write some problems on the board, and I want you to try. You do not need a calculator for them, so put the calculators away because it's basic math, okay? And I'm going to put this right here, too. And I don't want you to use common sense. I want you to use this. Okay, because that one you can do common sense, but the other two you won't be able to Try that.
Okay. <clears throat> what is 10% of 417? Well, 10% goes in this spot. What is x of 417? And that's how you set that one up. Cross, multiply, and solve. Now the reason you don't need a calculator is 417 times 10 is 41 what? 70 is equal to 100x. Divide by 100. Now watch this now. This is some real hard math. So your answer is 41.7. Because when you divide by 100, you move the decimal over two places to the left. Now, a lot of you are saying, well, he's just being a smart aleck. There are actually people in college that don't know that. There are people in college that don't know that you have to move, that when you divide by 10 or 100 or 1,000, count the zeros and you move to the left two places. Now a lot of you should have said, well all you have to do is move decimal one place because it's 10. Well that's fine also, but you can't do that down here. You have to use two three steps to do that or to use it to do this. So let's do the next one. 12 is, so that goes on top, 30% of what? X. Now that's going to be 30X is equal to 1,200. Again, you don't need a calculator because you're divided by 30. And what happens with the zeros on 30 and the 1,200? And what's 120 divided by 3? This one here. Now, if you couldn't do the first two, try the last one. Because I still see people writing, so try the last one. Twenty-two is what percent of forty-two? Now you may need a calculator on this one because it's not a lot of zeros, so you may need a calculator. Twenty-two hundred divided by forty-two. Now don't wait. Don't don't reach for a calculator quite yet because you can still divide by two on both the top and the bottom. And that's 1100 over what? 24. And now you might want to use your calculator. 21. 21. Okay. You use your calculator. 20 will go into 1,050 times, so it's going to be at least 50. But what does it come out to be? What? Thank you. 52.38. I love it when I ask y'all for answers, and this is what I get. <laughs> All right, not trying to insult your intelligence, just knocking the cobwebs loose because you do have to you do have to deal with percentages, and they're just making sure that you have those cobwebs knocked loose.
So hopefully you do now. Make sure you can do these two things. Decimal to a percentage and percentage to a decimal. Um, it shows you the example right there, so I don't think there's much of a problem there. Oh, I'm sorry, three things. Let me redo that. Three things. Right there. Make sure you can go from a fraction to a percent, a decimal to a percent, and a percent to a decimal. It's all on page 11. Capish? Mm -hmm. All right, let's see what else we got to work over. And that's 1.2. I think we go to 1.4, right? 1.4. Okay, there you go. Definition. I meant para <laughs> parameter and statistic. Write those down. Page 16. We're gonna play the Ke we're gonna play the Kevin Bacon uh, game. Y'all know the Kevin Bacon game? No. no. My parents didn't teach me. Name an actor, and you should be able to get it back to or a movie, an actor or a movie. You should be able to get or anything really. You okay. should be able, huh? I'm sorry, what? That game? Yeah, that game. It's called Six Separations of Kevin Bacon. So, name an actor or an actress or a movie or... Name... What? Okay. <laughs> Angelina Jolie married Brad Pitt. Or shacks up with Brad Pitt, whichever the case may be. Brad Pitt, mm. Brad Pitt played in a movie with George Clooney, huh, yep, George Clooney, oh, I'm trying to think who George Clooney played, played with several people, hold on, I'm getting there, I'm getting there, George Clooney, Played in. It's called six. You got to get it. To, you got to get it to Kevin Bacon. That's you never heard of this game. Because that's. Oh, oh don't even say that. Okay, name. Huh? Kurtz. Kurtz. Okay, remember Kurtz. Kurtz. I remember that. Oh, gosh, I can't remember. Okay, George Clooney. I'm trying to think of his movies because I'm not a George Clooney fan. Let's see. George Clooney. I did like him in Old Brother of Art Thou because he was funny. And he played with Renee Zellweger in, in uh, what was it, Leatherheads? That was a cute movie. What? I've never seen that one. That don't help me. You got to find a way to get back to Kevin Bacon. From George Clooney, don't you have to know a lot about him? Yeah, and I don't know George Clooney, so I don't know. I'm trying to get some hints from y'all, but y'all, George Clooney. Last year's grade, he had a big crush on George Clooney. Did he? Did he? She was an old woman, she's like in her 60s. What school did you go to? Oh, okay. I don't know what. Okay, who did you name Angelina Jolie? You're trying to get how she got the football, how she um, No, if you don't know how to play the game, I'm trying to show you how to play the game. <laughs> and I suck at it. 
All right, let me do another act, Troy, because I don't know. Uh, honestly, Angelina Jolie, I only know like two movies she's played in, and George Clooney, I don't know, so i got to do something different. Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood. Okay. Clint Eastwood played in, I'm trying to think of a one that would go with this, uh, Dirty Harry. Harry. Dirty Harry was a cop, okay? So cop movies, there's a cop movie with uh, Richard Gere in it called Internal Affairs. Richard Gere, now that's two, I've done two. Uh, Richard Gere played with uh, Julia, Roberts. Julia Roberts in Pretty Woman. Pretty Woman. Huh? Yeah. And Julia Roberts played what? Flatliners. Flatliners with Kevin Bacon. That's how you that's how you do it. But you gotta know your movies. It's I can't believe y'all ain't never heard of this. Okay, I'll tell you what. Y'all think I'm crazy? All right, I'm going to show you. Pretty much, yeah. You can do it with pretty much anything. That's what the whole... No, you can't do it that way. That's too general. Yeah, they're all related. No, you can't do it that simple. But let me let me see if they do do some on uh, YouTube. They probably have some if YouTube ever comes up. Uh, six. What I say? Six separation. I love that sound. And I'm lucky enough to have the skills. I cannot stand when they do that. Go away. Six separations of Kevin Bacon, and it's not doing anything. I am so tired of these computers. Hello? Is it not going to let me go away? Just go away. I'll go to mine. Okay. Six separations of Kevin Bacon. Six degrees of separation, sorry. I don't know if this... Is it only Kevin Bacon that put it out with Well, it Now, in comparison to so some of the other movies, yeah. there's a small role for Kevin, whose character really takes a backseat to the young boy in this dog in the film. But it's a, another role that adds to the ever-popular game, Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon. You know the game in which you can take any movie, connect it back to Kevin by no more than six people. You can also include animals in this now, too. Seen people connect me to, you know, Bambi and uh, Mr. Ed, and so uh, it, it's uh, it, it, it's there's nothing new about me working with a dog. I also uh, asked Kevin yesterday about my impending marriage. That's and asked the game. Him if he had any advice? Of course, he's been married to is it Kira Sedgwick? Sedgwick? Is Sedgwick, that, yeah. Sedgwick for for quite a while now. He said, "I he, wish I could find somebody actually playing," and because I suck at it. Hello, everybody. This is Chris, C Rock Productions here to give you a short demo video on how to play Hollywood golf. Now, to anyone that's never played Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon or Six Degrees of Separation, the idea of the game is to basically link actors together um, with the movies they've starred in with other actors as links. How do you get rid of that? I noticed most people that have been playing Hollywood golf so far have been just trying to go with the hole in one right off the bat, which of course they is understandable, but as you get app. later into the game, it's gonna be harder to do that. So you're gonna wanna learn how to actually play this by linking the actors together. Okay, let's get into the game here and show you what to do. Start a new game. Hollywood Golf. There okay. it is, people. Choose your character. Put your name in. And we're off. Now, game starts. Gives you two actors. You could uh, go for the hole in one right off the bat and put the movie that the two actors are in together. But as I stated, as the game gets harder, you're not going to know what the movie they're in together is, so you're going to have to play it out. Much like when you're playing golf, you're not always going to be able to get the ball in the hole. Just the play time. the game! You have to play it out, <laughs> keep in mind what the par is, and then uh, start linking. So we're going to start out. Just think of a movie that the first actor is in to start out with, just to, to get your first link. So uh, Brad Pitt, we're going to say he was in 
Fight Club. Now, if the game um, pops up with a uh, selection for you to choose, um, it's just basically just to help you so you don't have to type it all in. But if it doesn't give you the name of the, that, you're, that you're typing in, you can still use it. So now we've got to get from Edward Norton to kick to Edward Norton. I don't even know that. who Edward Norton is. Hit swing. <laughs> the game checks the database for the answer. And if you got the answer correct, it's going to actually play out the game. Okay. We got one stroke, so now we got to get from Edward Norton to Kate Blanchett. Now the game, you're gonna have to actually start thinking pretty hard about uh, what movies. Especially Kate if you don't know who Edward gonna, Norton is. Work forwards and backwards here. I'm just gonna keep going. So Edward Norton, I know he was also in uh, the Italian Job. The Italian Job. Did anybody watch that movie? With yeah. Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. You'll start to, to okay. Start now I know who Mark Wahlberg is. And as you keep linking, but I still hadn't. I'm still trying to get Mark Wahlberg. And eventually, you'll to, see the connection, and, and you'll make it. I'm already starting to see. It. I think Mark Wahlberg was also in um, The Departed. Oh gosh. Yep. Yeah. With Leonardo. Oh gosh. And then Leonardo with Kate Blanchard in Titanic. And have you ever seen the, the uh, Revolutionary Road? That's depressing. And from what I remember, Leonardo DiCaprio is in The Aviator with and Kate she's Blanchard. In there. She's in there too. So I think we'll get it in just. Be able to get it within par here. Yep. But she didn't play a go. real big part in the I got the whole world actually continue to play it out. Four, four, five, six, and five. Same type scenario. That's well, the, that, that's the real fun okay, part of the game. Okay, shut up. Actually All right. <laughs> so now you know how to play the seven degrees of Kevin Bacon. And it really hit with Kevin Bacon in the 80s. And people just play it all the time now. Popular six degrees of seven fake. I mean, really? Did they still have that? Uh, was it the six degrees of separation? Yeah, they still they got still it. As far as I know. Now, how does that? Away. How does that work? Here we go. Because That's you and I, there is no separation. I'm like right there. Right. right. We're uh, whatever one degree. Or we're one. Well, no, we know. Our, our, we're the same. We're, we're the all same. the same. We're the, there's I mean, you, there's me. Right, okay. No separation. No. But it, look, it's go, it's a it's a crazy phenomenon. It lasted for a really but long time. But it works. Time. It does work. And I have to tell you that this is a little embarrassing, but on, on my show, there are a lot of actors that come through, um, partly because I end up killing a lot of them. Mm -hmm. um, and Or, some, that's, that's right. or somebody else that. does. Mm -hmm. But one of the great things is that I get a chance to work with these incredible actors one after another. They'll come for an episode or just for a couple of days or whatever. And what I, was I, one I of his famous up. movies and that he first started? Them welcome, and I want to make them feel loose. Uh, at home because sometimes it's a little... What movie is he in that, that you don't think he's in that maybe it's because it's so old? Older or because of my misspent youth, but I don't always Animal remember House. the people that I've worked with. He's the so one getting spanked. That I can use the worldwide interweb to actually yep. check uh -huh. their vacant really? numbers. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Check the index. I do. I go on the, uh, you know, one of these sites and I put in vacant numbers. Yeah. And sure enough, yeah. I'll yeah. it'll tell me if I've worked with this person or not. And then I can walk right in the makeup trail and say, hey, you doing, man? Good to see you. Remember we did that thing with Larry Storch? Well, anyway, that's the six degrees of separation with Kevin Bacon. And it talks about it in the book. What time is class over? 12 what? Okay. You, I just keep seeing people looking at their watch. I'm trying to make class interesting, but we'll just start talking about math, okay? Uh, and it talks about the six degrees. And, and that article, this little article right here, talks about it and says that basically you could do that with pretty much anything as long as you can think clearly about the subject area that you're doing. If you have nothing that like, like for instance, sports, believe it or not, I'm not a caveman, okay? I can't tell you anything about sports except for football and golf and NASCAR. That's it. 
I have nothing to do with other sports. Um, if you say, okay, you want to go from, uh, uh, okay, the only basketball player I know, classy, without a doubt, nobody has followed in his footsteps, Michael Jordan. Okay, that's just my opinion, and I haven't seen anybody like him since then. But trying to do Michael Jordan to another basketball player, oh, forget it. I couldn't, I don't know any basketball players except Shaq and this guy lately that went from high school to college. I mean, what's, what's his name? Who? LeBron John Johnson? LeBron James. I don't, I don't know. And then there's a guy that they tried to make Michael, Michael Jordan, tried to make him into Michael Jordan place for L.A., yeah, they, and that didn't work. And that's the only four that I know of. Um, but, you know, but if you know your movies, you can do it, but you have to think. You can't just sit there and go, oh, bye, 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 bye. Mm, don't work that easy. But anyway, what is a parameter and a statistic? A parameter, they're both the same thing. Parameter deals with population. Statistic deals with sample. Let me give you an example. If I tell you that I want you to find the mean and the median of a population, I'm not going to tell you mean and median. I'm going to tell you I want you to find mu and sigma. Parameters will always be Greek letters. In statistics, in probability, your parameters always will be in Greek letters. And that means when you go into a board meeting, when you go into a uh, director, a supervisor's meeting, or you go into any kind of meeting and you have the president or the district manager presenting a report and you see mu and sigma, it, are they talking about the sample or are they talking about the population? They're talking about the population. Those two parameters are dealing with the population. And then the sample is dealing with the statistic. So if you're, let's say that Miss Poland, who works for Burger King, she goes into a supervisor's meeting and the district manager is giving this meeting. This is one of those meetings it isn't held at Burger King, it's held at a hotel or something, and you go and you listen to what the, the head honcho is saying. And the head honcho is giving a PowerPoint presentation, and he's going over a bunch of figures, and he says, and he's got these figures right here. Um, that's X bar, I'm not going to, I mean, that's pretty simple. And S is S, I'm not going to put S in here. Uh, see, these four are the same thing. But, he's not going to tell you that because you already know, because you've been in statistics before, that if he's talking about mu or sigma, or you see a chart and you see mu and sigma, you know that is dealing with the population. If you see another chart right beside it, and it says x bar is equal to 12, and s is equal to 2.3, you know that's the what? The sample. Population is a parameter. The P's match. And a statistic is a sample. The S's match. Now, let me ask y'all a question. Those of you who had probability. Is there any difference in the formulas between those four? No. No difference. These have no mathematical value. These are just symbols used so that you know from a reader's perspective or from a viewer's perspective that the presenter is talking about the population or the sample. Okay? And population parameters will always be what? Greek letters. Write that down. I 
going to be a bonus question. Six separations of Kevin Bacon, and I'll give y'all a uh, actor or actress or a movie. Huh? Well, I sure don't know who Edward Norton is. Yeah, you know. All right, let's see. Edward Norton. Norton. Hey, Norton. Edward Norton. Nope. Never seen Fight Club. Mm -mm. No, nope, don't know him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he played the Hulk. That's right. I never did watch that. Better Hulk movie instead of Eric Bana. So. Okay, let's see if there was any. He was in The Simpsons. Yeah. Okay, now I know why I don't know him. I don't never, I've never seen Red Dragon. He was in Red Dragon. Yeah. I don't. It must have been a minor part because. He's like the main character. The man, the the main one for Red Dragon was the guy that painted his back up. He's the one that Edward Norton's trying to stop. Edward Norton's the cop. He's the killer. Okay, all right. Okay, now I know who he is. I still don't. I still don't know him. I mean, I know who you're talking about now, but I have to watch the movie again. I mean, he's not a he's not an actor like like he's not a whole bunch of He's not. He's not a Tommy Lee Jones. I mean. Tommy Lee Jones, you say Tommy Lee Jones or Sean Connery or, or you know, Kevin Bacon, you, sh you know those people. I mean, if you don't, I don't know this guy. I'm sorry. Let's see, this guy now. The guy that just killed himself, not, not Robin Williams. He's a good actor, terrible comedian, but a good actor. Who's the other guy that killed himself? I love him as a villain or as an actor. Seymour. Oh, oh gosh, I wish he hadn't killed himself. Okay, whatever. He did. All right. Anyway, I think he's a good. I think he was a great actor. But anyway, let's get back to what's at hand before y'all complain. You were talking about math 100% of the time. No, I sure don't. <laughs> y'all go to Good Bodies class if y'all want that. Next. Qualitative and quantitative. Test questions. If I go through the class, well, let me ask you this. How many of you have ever heard the saying, well, I would rather have quality rather than quantity? Okay, a lot of you have. Hopefully all of you should have. Quality versus quantity. If you are producing something, let's say you, you invented something. Okay, let's go with Duck Commander. He invented a duck call. That was just, I don't know if he invented the duck call, but he invented a duck call. All right? And do you notice how they make them on the show? How do they make them on the show? On Duck Dynasty. How do they make them? They do it by what? By hands. They put together the duck calls by hand. And one of the reasons they do that is because they want what? Quality before quantity. What happens when you get quantity before quality? You get a bunch of duck calls with two places melted together or something. I mean, have you ever seen something that's defective when you bought it? I mean, it's just all messed up. Well, that's quality. That's quantity before quality. But when you go and buy something like in the mountains, you go to the mountains and you buy something that's handmade, what, what, is, what is that? It's quality because, okay, that, that's made one at a time. Same thing with quality management. 
if, if you've ever worked in an industry or a, a Bosch or you ever worked at Michelin or you have, there's a thing called quality management to make sure that you don't put out a what? Defective product. All right? Quality is basically non-numerical. If I go through and ask for how many people have brown eyes, how many people have blue eyes, how many people have hazel eyes, how many people have gray eyes, how many people have blue eyes, or whatever the case, green eyes, whatever, that is qualitative data. I could put a number on it. I could say that there's five blondes in here and all the rest are brunettes. I may have a little bit of Auburn. Let's see, I'm looking for red. Maybe three redheads. Okay? That, I could put a number on it, but it's not a number-based data. It's qualitative. Eyes, hair, um, what color shoes you're wearing, anything having to do with color, anything having to do with non-numerical values. Then what is quantitative data? Numerical. That's numerical, and usually it has to do with your what? Weight? height, age, shoe size, anything that's measured. Anything that's measured. Okay? You need to make sure you know that because that right there is a test question. Next one should be the four different types. And we'll go over that. Oh, no, 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 no. It's quite discreet. Where's discreet? Thank you. This one is the one I spend a lot of time on because a lot of people don't know the difference. And this is a test question. Discrete usually has to do with the irrational numbers or the rational numbers. I usually tell students to think of the word concrete. And I usually think of the rational numbers. And I love to put rational up here because students go, well, I don't even know what a rational is. I mean, rational. I, I, can't, I can't even call it in life at the same time. Rational. Okay, so there's the three numbers, or three the words to describe discrete numerical values. And then you have the continuous. And I just tell students, irrational. Now, let's go back to your grammar school, high school, whatever the case may be. What is rational numbers? Give me a definition, your definition of a rational number. Don't be shy because a lot of people are very quiet at this time when I ask this question. What is a rational number? No, you're wrong. Be quiet. All right. Good try. Good try. A rational number, I'm going to give you a Hubert definition. Predictable and locatable. Four over two. Three over two. Four. Negative five. One half. One sixth. Six sevenths. All of those are rational numbers. Now, I've tried to include different types of numbers in there, so you can't just generalize and say, oh, well, it's all whole numbers, or it's all fractions, or it's all negatives, or it's all positives. You can't do that. So why are they predictable, and why are they locatable? Well, what's 4 over 2? What's 3 over 2? 4 over 1 is 4. Negative 5 over 1 is negative 5. That's 0.5. That's 0.166 repeating. That's 0.666 repeating. 
So why are they locatable and predictable? Because I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that there is no other numbers here. There's no other numbers here. There's no other numbers here or here. There's no other numbers here. What's the next number here? What's the next number here? Everything is predictable. All right? Let me give you some examples of irrations. I'll give you three of them. Get your calculators out. Now I want you to give me the whole digits of each one of these. Somebody give me the square root of 2, raise 2 to the 0.5 power, and give me all the digits. It's 1.41. 1, 4, 1, 4, 2, 9, 3, 5, Hold on. 1.41. 1. Go ahead. 4, 2, 1, 3, 5, 6, 6. 6 what? 2. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Most of your calculators will go to ten digits. All right, somebody give me the square root of seven. Two point six four five seven five one three one one. Okay, somebody give me pi. Three point one four one five nine. Keep going. What do you notice about those numbers? They don't stop for one thing, but what else? You cannot predict the next digit. Now, a lot of people say, well, you can predict one. You sure? Look at this. 6, 4, 5, 7, 5, 1, 3, 1, 1, 1. There's no pattern here, here, or here. No pattern. So there is no consistency. Write that down. Yes, ma'am. Excuse me. I have a message here for Christina Barrington. Okay, share it with everybody. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> there is no pattern, no consistency. It's not bad, is it? No. Okay, good. You need to leave. Go ahead. Patterson, right? Huh? What did you say last night? Barrington. Barrington. Oh, you need my phone. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm supposed to have a fit. Ah! Huh? a point of sun. Huh? Get a point of sun. Point of what? Behind you, point of sun. And then you Ah! No pattern, no consistency. No consistency. Now, what has this got to do with discrete and continuous? And because we're not going to be using these, and, and we're not going to be using these. Because this is used in algebra and algebra. So what is it in this class that we need? Well, let me ask you a question. Let's say that I have a box of measuring uh, devices up here. Three day and wind's blowing. As long as the wind's blowing, it's okay in August. But if the wind ain't blowing, I'm going in the house. <laughs> Even if I, I grew up on a farm, grew up hard, but I, August, I can't stand August. But anyway, I give you a big old box of measuring devices. They got tape measures, yardsticks, uh, the digital devices that you pull on the tape because people were too stupid to read the tape. Uh, what was that? No sneezing in class. Uh, you know the old carpenters fold out? Remember the fold out rulers? Some of those in there. All kinds, four, six, eight different types. And I got about 30 of them in here. And I tell y'all, everybody see that line post right there? Just right over there, okay? See, you know what a light post looks like. <laughs> All right, see the bottom of the, the, the concrete pedestal right there? I tell y'all to go out there and measure that concrete 
pedestal. <coughs> no call for me. All right? Everything okay? Yeah. No bad stuff? No, it's not important. Oh, okay. You need to go to the doctor's appointment. You need to go to the doctor's today. Okay. I want you to measure that. It looks like it's about three foot tall. But I want you to measure. Okay. And she got mad left. <laughs> um, is she okay? <laughs> she left her other stuff. She took everything. She left in a hurry. I hope she's okay. I didn't say anything. I said measuring the body. <laughs> anyway, I, told, I tell all y'all to go out there and write down the measurement of that concrete base. And you come back. And what will I have? There's 30 people in here. What will I have? Three different things. Why? Because how we perfect. Yeah. Well, half of you don't know how to read a measure <laughs> tape. That's one reason. The second reason is... Uh, Miss Poland, she's gonna go out there and she's not gonna do anything half-assed. She's gonna do it right. So she's gonna take a little shovel out there or take her foot and she's gonna dig around the bottom of that thing where the dirt is to find out what? Where the actual bottom of it is. And then you got quiet storm back there and you're just gonna move from top of the grass. <laughs> And then half of y'all can't read it. And then some of y'all gonna round up. Some of you gonna round down. Okay, two and seven eight, so I might as well say three four. So, what will you tell me? What can you tell me about the measurement of that concrete pedestal? Is it solid or is it not consistent? So we can say measurements are Continuous. That you need to remember. So I'm going to take my red marker and my highlighter and we'll color it mauve. That's important. Measurements are continuous. But what's not continuous? Well, let's say that I tell you to go out to the parking lot and I tell White Storm to go out to the gate over here and the gate over here and lock. Lock those two gates. So there's no way in and no way out. And I tell each of you to count the number of vehicles, I don't say cars, say vehicles that include bicycles, motorcycles, uh, trucks and cars, SUVs, vans, everything that has wheels on them. You go out there, you count them. Mostly as cars. I, I'll say, I'll say, motorized vehicles, excluding motorcycles uh, and mopeds. mopeds and bicycles, liquor cycles. Yeah, all of those. Okay, <laughs> only cars, SUVs, vans, trucks. And you go out in the parking lot. How many different numbers will I get? I'll get the same amount, unless people can't count. Okay. <laughs> I'll get the same amount. 90% of you will come in and say, there's 42 cars out there. And one will say 43. Yeah, but there was a go-kart over there. No, go-kart don't count. All right? All right? So, so most of you would get the same number. And what did you just do? You didn't measure. You what? Counted. And counted <laughs> is what you're going to get. Ooh. How did I do that? Oh, there we go. Hold on. There we go. Counting is discrete or concrete. Discrete, concrete, count. Now you know the difference between discrete and continuous. Or you can just go with the book. You want to read the definition of the book after you understand it? I wouldn't. Result when the data values are quantitative and the number of values is infinite or countable. If there are infinite many values, the collection of values is a countable is countable if it is possible to count them individually, such as the number of tosses of a coin. 
Continuous, results from infinitely many possible quantitative values which the collection of values are non-countable. That is, it is possible to count the individual items because at least some of them are on a continuous scale such as lengths from 0 to 12. Discrete count. Continuous measure. What do you do with lengths? You measure them. What do you do with distances? Measure them. Okay, now you measure distances. What do you do with volumes? You measure them. What do you do with heights? You measure them. What do you do with weights? Piece of cake. Don't look at that. Go with that. Or go with this. There you go. Measurements. Counting. That is a test question. You're asked to count the eggs in a basket. What is this? Continuous or discrete? It would be discrete. That's the test question. And you feel good about yourself so you don't have to put smokestacks on your truck. Okay. Oh, there's some eggs right there. Okay, now turn to page. It's on the last page. I don't go through the individual definitions. On page 20, down at the bottom, I want you to write those levels of measurement down or highlight them. That is a test question, but I don't cover it. I don't go over it a lot. Um, a ratio, height, length, weight, anything measured. Poor old ratio. Ratio, anything measured. Interval, I would remember temperature. Interval, temperature. There is no natural degrees for temperature because we don't know what zero degrees really is. Ordinal, just remember a race. Ordinal, race, has to be what? Order. When you, when you do a race, who has to, who wins? Who gets second? Second, third, fourth. A race. Nominal, that would be eye color. Well, I thought you said, nom I thought you said eye color was qualitative. Yeah, it is, but it's also nominal because I cannot tell you the color of your eyes. Okay? Ms. Tatterton, right? Tatterton? Tatterton? Who me? What did you say? Barrington. Barrington. Yeah. Bar Leave me alone. <laughs> Can I call you different names? Yeah, I don't care. I'll, I'll go to the meeting. Okay. All right. Miss Barrington. Did I say it right? No. Bob. Okay, Bob. Miss <laughs> Bob has brown eyes. Let's see. You have brown eyes, don't you? All right. But I could not tell you the difference between their brown eyes. Why? Because brown is brown to some people. Alright? Brown eyes. Brown eyes. But whose whose eyes are darker? Between all four of us. You can't pick. Okay? Same thing with blue eyes. I don't know who has blue eyes. I can't tell yours. Yours looks like the blue or yours brown. What are yours? Hey, that's why I can't tell. And the sun, I can't tell. Let me go over here. Let's see if I can find some blue eyes. Got blue eyes here. Blue eyes here. Brown eyes or hazel. Blue eyes. Okay. Now, blue eyes, you might be able to tell a little bit of difference, but how are you going to explain it? Okay. Her blue eyes are more of a hazel. Got a little bit of hazel in it. Her blue eyes are blue. His blue eyes are blue. Uh, what, your, yours are blue or hazel? They're green, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The whole point is, I can tell a little bit that her eyes and his eyes are bluer than her. All right. But I can't. How do I explain it? I can't give you. Now I could say, on a scale from one to ten, yours is about a five, yours is about a six, yours is about a seven. Now you could do that, but that's not universal. So that's why ordinal, I mean, or whatever it is on the bottom. Nominal, that is like the degree of eye color. Okay? Alrighty then.
We're going to stop right there.